G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Often I've been known to criticise Gaijin's moves and sort of have a go at them for some of the controversial decisions that they make. Uh, obviously this is in good spirit and in good uh, faith. I personally really enjoy War Thunder and when I see something that I believe is not right, uh, I'm not going to sit aside and watch it sort of uh, go ahead. I'd rather voice my opinion and I would rather sort of uh, at least start a conversation regarding certain topics. A good one is battle, ra battle ratings. I always talk about battle ratings um, and I always talk about weird shitty decisions. For example, the uh, when the F4 was given its aim 7s and there were no real sort of flare counterparts, nothing flares on any of the other nations, uh, at least we got some of the MiG-21 bis, the next patch. So there are some things that I do criticise Gaijin for quite rightly, and there are other things that I am just happy that are in the game. Most of the time this comes in the form of events, and most of Gaijin's events are fairly okay. I do think, however, the Build-A-Bear event is, uh, is too grindy, and the fact that you can't get all of the vehicles is a crying shame, and a little bit of a crime to be honest. So, with that said, we're going to have a look at the Battle Pass, and the Battle Pass is actually pretty good. I don't really have that much to say about it. In fact, I don't have really that much to sort of criticise, because the Battle Pass has overall shown itself to be a fairly decent way of monetization. Gaijin is, after all, a free-to-play title, so they don't actually make any money off sales of the game, and therefore need to recuperate their earnings in other places. Not only that, but when you use game when you use the games as a service model, you have to continuously supply different and new forms of monetization, otherwise your game cannot pay for itself, cannot pay for future development, and will eventually die. War Thunder, whilst the servers seem really unstable and dumb, and in some cases they are, need to find a way to pay the server bills, and they need to find a way to pay for running costs and overheads and all this sort of stuff. And honestly, a Battle Pass is not a bad way of doing that. Over the last season of the Battle Pass, we had four vehicles introduced into the game. We had the Matilda Hedgehog, which was extremely fun, and had a unique feature, which was the, the Mortars. Um, we don't have a tank that can carry anti-ship more or anti-submarine Mortars. I think that that was fairly interesting, but it was also fun to try and get a kill with them, which never really happened for me, but people like Oddbores managed to get them, and plenty of other content creators I'm sure managed to get them that you've seen that I haven't, but overall the Matilda Hedgehog was really fun. I genuinely enjoyed it and I had a lot of fun like playing around. The next vehicle was the F2G, and that was the Garland. I genuinely don't know much about ships. It's a ship, it's good, it keeps the boat players happy, and gives the people who uh, bought the Battle Pass the option to sell something. Our third one was the F2G1, and I did a review on the F2G, and it was really good. I genuinely enjoyed it, and I had a lot of fun playing it. It is a very, very good silver line grinder for my personal purposes. If you're a pilot as well, and you're very patient, then it is also a fairly good silver line grinder. This particular plane was uh, pretty good, and it was also free. That was perhaps the highlight of the battle pass for me, and if you wanted to sell it, I think you can sell it on the marketplace. Um, eventually when it goes live, when it when you're able to sell them. And finally, we had the T-10A, which was basically a T-10M with shittier, I think, turret armor a little bit, and a 120mm, I think it's the D-25T gun, which is the one that is on the IS-4. So, we have a fairly varied series of vehicles across tiers, across a couple of nations, and of course, we had uh, just a general sort of balance across all four vehicles. None of them were particularly amazing, but they're all unique and they're all interesting. So there's plenty to do in that respect, which was fantastic. Having that was really, really nice. And whilst it sounds odd to hear something positive coming from my mouth about Gaijin, I do like to give credit where credit is due. And in this case, I genuinely think that Gaijin has nailed it. A lot of people were quite hostile to the idea of a battle pass when it first came out, uh, and honestly I was a little bit hesitant. I needed to see sort of how it panned out, and it turns out that most of it has been extremely good. The only downside I would say 
is that with the battle pass, you don't have the ability to grind out extra vehicles with the warbond shop. Now, it is a fairly hard slog to get to the warbond shop and to get that vehicle at, or that trophy at the end of every month. But I tell you what, it was just as hard, and honestly, I'm finding that I'm using the warbond shop a lot more to buy things other than boosters fairly, fairly regularly. And honestly, that is a really good thing. I'm going and buying the vehicles or buying the chests and, you know, selling a T26E on the marketplace for two bucks. And someone can get that, and then I can put that money into buying skins or, you know buying a premium vehicle not that i personally need a premium vehicle but certainly someone else might want to do that and this is a very very good way to earn a little bit more gaijin coin on the marketplace if you don't want that vehicle then you don't have to keep it so some of those vehicles are worth a lot of money on the uh, gaijin marketplace and you can sell them and go and buy yourself i don't know a mig 17 as a shenyang f5 a G91 R4, some Golden Eagle, some Premium Time, and these are things that are really valuable to the player base. Not only that, but if you're one or the other, like a tanker or a pilot or a captain, and you don't want, say, the F2G, you don't have to buy, you don't have to consume it, and you can sell the camo with it too. It's a fairly good system in that regard, where you don't have to use everything, but there are more options too. The only exception with that rule is that you couldn't buy your typical three vehicles in three months if you ground out the warbond shop. But personally, I think that Gaijin is going to be running at a loss anyway because more people are actually using the warbond shop to grind out the battle pass to get some extra levels with it using the special tasks. And people are being more conscious of their battle pass tasks now than ever before. That would be my guess. And according to the little survey that I did a while back, most people don't give a shit about the vehicles and now with the battle pass they have a reason to give a shit about the vehicles which is to, in my opinion a much better use of the warbond shop than it currently is now with the good things out of the way i'd like to sort of transition towards things that could be improved and whilst i do love to be positive and i do love to sort of include some fun stuff there are always things that could be a little bit improved that uh, Gaijin may have missed out on and maybe this is an opportunity for Gaijin to improve their sort of uh, maybe maybe their appeal to the battle pass I think Gaijin has a lot to do here that could be really really cool so the first thing that I would suggest is for the battle pass to be laid out physically visually in a way that appeals to someone that is uh, or is a little bit more understandable the battle pass at the moment is a little bit confusing in the sense that the you don't actually know at a single glance what is free and what is not free and i understand that you can just have a look at the little tab that says free and then go oh okay that's in the free tier i would suggest personally that the free tier and the paid tier are actually separated by uh, a little bit of a like a gap like a like a timeline almost and the things that are on the free tier sit on the bottom of that timeline as such and the things that are on the top of the tier sit on top of that timeline one of the uh one of the games that comes to mind in this case is rainbow six rainbow six does a fairly good job of their battle pass and so does the mobile game clash of clans if you guys remember that from back in high school they decided to introduce a battle pass and whilst i play that game from time to time um, I find that the battle pass is quite intuitive and it is quite straightforward. Making it straightforward and intuitive reduces the confusion and of course with War Thunder you have a massive learning curve. So reducing that learning curve at all costs is always a good thing. Having that as a sort of little quality of life thing would mean a lot to the average player. They understand now exactly what their rewards are if they don't pay the battle pass and they understand their rewards exactly if they, don't, if they do pay. For the battle pass and i think that that can only be a little bit more of a positive thing a bit of clarity goes a long way all right so the second thing is not necessarily with the battle pass itself but it is to do with the rewards for the battle pass now as i understand it i think one of the vehicles is not available as a coupon i think all vehicles for a start should be available as coupons if you don't want them i don't think you should be sort of forced to have them 
This goes for event vehicles as well. I understand the low tier ones being a uh, like an unlock, but at the same time, if you're a pilot and you only care about planes, then you don't have to play tanks and therefore don't unlock the tank reward. You only unlock the plane reward, for example. Now, with this case, you will unlock un vehicles that you might not want if you are going to grind the battle pass anyway. And for me, I don't really appreciate this. I think they should all be coupons and this would give everyone the opportunity to sell on the Gaijin market. Remember, when you sell on the Gaijin market, Gaijin also takes a cut, so this doesn't benefit Gaijin in any way to do this. Giving them coupons is the ideal situation here. So our next one is to do with premium time or golden eagles. Now personally I don't really mind the current rewards of the battle pass however I would like to see something changed to the warbond shop. The warbond shop at the moment is pretty good but I would like to see the addition of either a three day premium coupon or a seven day premium coupon that you could activate at any time and perhaps maybe not sell on the marketplace. This little coupon or a voucher if you wanted to call it that would basically never expire and you could use it on patch day, you could use it whenever you wanted but you would have to grind a fair bit, say it would be 1300 war bonds and three special tasks or five special tasks, something like that. It, that's not terribly difficult to make up uh, you can, if you have the, the war bonds sitting there already, that's five days worth of grinding, uh, the special tasks specifically, which means that you can uh, basically do your war bonds, your daily war bonds, and then go on to your special tasks. I think if you're really concentrating on things, the maximum time it should take you is about four hours or three hours a day. That's not a whole lot of time, and three times five, 15 hours for seven days worth of premium, I think is a really, really good deal. Alternatively, if you need to grind out the war bonds yourself, that might take a little bit longer, especially on the free tier of the battle pass. But honestly, that's not a terrible idea. I think you can get, uh, I think it was 4,000 war bonds. I'm not really sure. Someone let me know in the comment section below how much you can actually unlock with the free tier of the battle pass, because I counted it when it started, but unfortunately I've forgotten the number. So if you, say, theoretically get 3,000 War Bonds, uh, then that would give you the op opportunity to earn two weeks of premium from three months' worth of, uh, of grinding. Now, I, let's just say that you only earn 2,600 at a reasonable number. I got to level 105 for the Battle Pass. Um, granted, I was away a little bit, but for someone who puts regular effort into the game, I can very easily see this being very easy to achieve, or at least achievable as a flat sort of basis. Now I think if you set that as a baseline, go say 1300 war bonds and 5 special tasks, then that's not a really tall order for some really really good stuff, and people are going to buy into the battle pass so they can get more of this so-called free premium time. I think this is a really, really good idea because having that option to buy a coupon of premium premium time is not only a quality of life thing that makes Gaijin look really good and look like they're giving away basically free shit with no strings attached, but it also works well for Gaijin because they get people buying the battle pass and actually spending money in a case where they otherwise might not. And in the case of buying a battle pass, you might be able to get, I think, 5,000 war bonds or 5,600 war bonds, which translates to about four seven-day coupons. So 28 days of premium for $25, plus you get a couple of extra vehicles. Uh, but for me, really, that would be the really, really uh, beautiful cherry on top, absolutely perfect thing that Gaijin does. If, if they did that, I would be extremely happy. I think that that is a really good addition to the Warbond shop and the fact that people don't have to spend it right away is going to be a real bonus towards them. And the fact that it is only 7 days of premium means that people aren't going to use this to completely replace their premium time. These are people that might buy say 90 days at a time uh, or 90 days here and there and might want to top up on, on a little bit of premium time. So for me, having the opportunity to do that not only makes the free-to-play player happy, but it also carries that little 90-day guy or the, the guy that doesn't buy premium too often or buys it in smaller amounts. 
it allows them to carry on a little bit more and be a little bit more satisfied with the game. And we all know that the more satisfied a customer is, the more likely they're willing to, first of all, keep playing, and second of all, actually pay for stuff in the game. It's one of those things that I think a little bit of human touch would really make the difference. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It is always great to have a conversation about this type of stuff. Um, if you are maybe a game developer or are working in game design, let me know as well if you think that might be a good idea or might be a bad idea. Of course, check out all my links in the description below. Live streams, merch, Patreon, all that sort of good stuff. Any support is much appreciated. Thank you very much, guys, for sort of letting me take on sponsors as well. Uh, I'm going to try and use that money. Well, actually, I will use that money to put it into a new microphone. I'm looking at the Shure SM7B, and I'm looking at the Rode PSA1 microphone stand to go with it. Since my current microphone is uh, looking a little bit sad, it's starting to rust. So with that done, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Thank you very much for liking, commenting, feeding the algorithm. I really appreciate that. Thank you much, very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you next time.